good evening friends from india and good morning friends from usa on behalf of sme chamber of india india us sme business council and federation of indian sme associations it's my immense pleasure to welcome at this very very important webinar it's a focusing on the exploring business and investment opportunities for indian and us smes especially and manufacturing industries uh, this is my you know uh, maybe around uh, 2000 webinar in these two years and focusing more on the, you know, how we can support each other how we can explore the business cooperation with each other so it's my immense pleasure to welcome uh, miss island nandi who is heading the commercial of us consulate us embassy in india and uh, suja menon ji uh, the minister for the commercial from on behalf of our indian embassy from washington uh, miss island and miss uh, suja ji welcome at this uh, important webinar and it's my pleasure that you know to welcome jo joseph uh, uh, lebas uh, who is heading the our uh, council in usa and also he is a businessman and he is also supporting indian companies to explore business and investment opportunities in usa we have mr rajendra jagdare dr rajendra jagdare who is heading the you know science and technology park in pune in maharashtra which is one of the you know unique and largest uh, in the uh, science and industrial park which is supporting to the startups to smes and startups to manufacturing industry to transform expand their business activity and improve their technological development friends this is very important uh, webinar because now uh, al almost we are in, uh, ending the uh, corona virus which is impacted to last two years especially in india rather and this is a very unique thing because after this pandemic or during this pandemic most of the us companies stop buying from china and this is a good opportunity for indian especially for the sme sector because smes are always looking for support guidance hand holding to go global to expand their business not only india but outside of india and so many times sme sector are looking for new emerging and unique opportunity to for a business bilateral trade advanced technology technological alliance and mostly the manufacturing setup wherever they get opportunity we are aware that india's sme sector is one of the largest employment generation sector which is putting lot of efforts for the contribution of the industrial output and i am happy to inform all of you that we have achieved 400 billion us dollars exports in this uh, year and particularly the role of sme sector played very very importantly and they are you know, the the main force of this uh, output of the industrial as well as you know exports uh let me tell all of you that you know the honorable prime minister had given the target for the reaching uh, 3 billion dollars exports by 2030 and making india as a manufacturing hub which is you know played by a very very important role by sme sector and i'm sure that uh, on behalf of sme chamber of india i am confident that sme sector india will play important role and accomplish the target growth and accomplish the uh, the project a dream project of our honorable prime minister to achieve the india's growth at highest level today we are going to discuss a few points where you know uh, mainly emerging opportunity for smes and manufacturing industries in india and us so i will not take much time but i want to give you a glance of our india us sme business council which is a platform provided for particular to indian and us companies to connect with each other explore business cooperation identify the unique business opportunities yeah. particularly the manufacturing industry joint venture technology transfer uh, uh, contract manufacturing and of course marketing and promotional activities uh, either in india or either in the uh, usa so we have uh, two dynamic ladies with, with us today which is both are heading the commerce department and i am very happy that, you know wherever the you know the, uh, the female are heading the department so i'm sure the you know fantastic support uh, straight forward support and you know positive support will be given to all our members all indian companies and us companies and i'm sure that uh, during the visit of uh, ambassador catherine tai you know the there was a uh, trade forum and that trade forum has you know transformed the india's and us uh, more and diplomatic and economic relationship so there also i would like to hear from the uh, madam eileen about 
what is the you know unique initiatives taken by the Biden government, and particularly you know during this war, during this you know many issues happening currently, India and US are having very very positive uh, cooperation, very good partnership, strategic partnership. How we can play important role, especially from the SME sector. We would like to hear from you. So on behalf of both the organizations, I welcome you and request you to give uh, your opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, inviting me. And it's a real pleasure to be with all of you this evening. Um, yeah, so the U.S.-India commercial relationship is, is, is very broad and deep. Um, our bilateral trade last year in 2021 was over $150 billion, um, which is a, a tremendous leap over 2020. Um, that was an uh, anomalous year for all of us. But significantly, it was 9.2% above 2019. Uh, which was $145.5 billion, uh, which at that time was the, um, the highest growth that we had ever had. So I'm very pleased to see that our bilateral um, trade is, is um, trending upwards. Uh, the January trade data for goods alone also showed an uh, growth over um, the 2021 data. So I'm hopeful that we'll see a positive growth trends this year. This is really due to all the great work that that uh, your companies and, and our companies are doing. Um, and uh, it's what you do is so vital to our, our relationship. Um, so we at the US Department of Commerce uh, really do focus on our US SMEs. Um, and I think, you know, I've been in India a long time. Um, altogether, this is my, I'm uh, finishing up on my 10 years. Um, so I know that the concept of uh, a small or medium enterprise or even a micro, you, you use the term MSME, um, is very different. So there are different definitions, but generally we look at um, employees of 500, like a, a company that has 500 or less employees, but it, it differs by the sector. So it's, it's, um, it's a little, it, it can get complicated. Um, so, but, but I, I would say in general, our um, company, our SMEs tend to be larger because we have a different definition than you do. Um, but it, uh, we um, work, uh, the companies that we work with of our clients, so to speak, 74% are U.S. SMEs. Um, so we are helping the small companies sell to India, the companies that do not have offices here, they don't have a government affairs person, they don't have a salesperson. We are helping them connect with Indian partners. Um, and uh, they, they really, in most cases, cannot do the work uh, without us. Um, so that's one reason why I find my work so gratifying uh, because we're, we're seeing these small companies uh, succeed, thrive. Sometimes they get a deal that keeps their company in business or they're able to hire one more person. It, that, that, that is truly exciting. Um, we also work with Indian companies that are looking to invest in the United States. And um, we all, you know, we have, of course, you know, the big companies you've all have heard of, you know, Tata and Mahindra and um, uh, all of those. But we're also working with, um, you know, some medium sized companies. And of the Indian companies we're working with, 66% um, uh, fall into our category of, of SMEs, um, companies that are looking to um, consider at some point investing in the United States. Um, so that is also exciting because really, if you look at it, the economic engine of both of our um, economies is, is, is fueled by our, the small and medium companies. So 99.9% um, .9 of all firms in the United States are considered SME. Um, but what, if you look at it, uh, uh, um, another fun fact is only 2% of our companies export or are involved in international business. Um, and so that's part of what we try to do is, is um, expand the outreach and get more companies uh, in, in, engaged. Um, of, uh, this is, um, we're at the tail end of International Women's Month, so I do want to say um, of our SMEs, 45% have at least 50% um, female ownership. So some are owned entirely by women, but some are owned by one woman, one man. Um, so that that's also exciting. Um, and also SMEs tend to be very agile. And if you look at the patents that the, that U.S. companies are producing, 96% are are um, come from small and medium companies. So they are really the innovators um, uh, and and the ones driving a lot of the technology and, and things that we're seeing. So I have, a, you know, throughout my career, I've worked mostly with, with small and medium companies. 
Um, I have to say, I, I love the passion that they have. They're, they're so excited about their product or technology or whatever they're doing. Um, and it, it really kind of fuels my um, energy level when I, when I talk to them. So what do they need when they're looking at um, international uh, business? Um, they are uh, looking for very concrete information. They, they, like I said, they don't have a government affairs person, so they're not interested necessarily in the geopolitical context of the U.S.-India relationship, right? They are looking at um, where, uh, which, you know, India is a big country, which, which um, area should I focus on? Which city should I go to first? Um, how do I find a partner? Kind of like the how-tos of doing business here, which of course differs um, based on where you are. In the North, it's uh, very different uh, than, than the South in terms of doing business. So they are looking for um, uh, very um, technical information on logistics. How do I ship my stuff there? Um, how, how do you work with customs? What do I do if, there, if, not, if it doesn't get um, moved through customs? So these are the types of calls that we hear. Um, credit is a big issue. Uh, and so a lot of um, SMEs, of course, are financed by, um, they're self-financed by families or, you know, they, they um, expand and, uh, as they are able to afford that. Some get loans um, and, and things like that, but access to credit is a, is a, real, um, a real challenge. And I say all this because um, they uh, don't have the bandwidth to take on um, a lot more than they're already taking on. So one thing I, I've seen over the years is that a company will come here, or right now we're doing everything virtually. We set them up with a, a series of meetings. They meet with potential partners. They say, okay, everything is great. They go back home and they are swamped. They, they don't have time to focus on what they've, uh, who they just met in, in India. They're focusing on the immediate problem. So of course, my my um, we call them and say, hey, did you did you sign that contract? Or did you make a sale? Did you identify a partner? And they're like, oh gosh, I just haven't had time to follow up. Um, and and so that we hear that an awful lot because they, you know, I, and I'm sure all the companies on the call can relate to this. They are um, oftentimes uh, people are doing multiple jobs at once just because that's the nature of of, of the SME, and it's and follow up can be can be very very challenging. Um, Right now, small and medium companies are relying on virtual work, um, and, and in some ways, this provides them with more opportunities uh, because you know they can sit at, in the comfort of their home and talk to a company in India, and then talk to a company in, in Germany. You know, you can do a lot more work uh, virtually. Um, but we, what we are seeing is that um, uh, companies are having lots of meetings, but they're not necessarily um, consummating any business deals or furthering the transaction based on one, um, you know, based on a series of, of uh, virtual meetings. Um, the companies that are successful doing business virtually often have had an established relationship or they have some sort of presence here in India that where their team here can, can follow up. So we are, um, now that international flights have opened, uh, we are definitely encouraging our US SME companies to consider travel here. Um, India is very expensive. Um, you know, companies tell me all the time it's much more expensive to come here than it is to China. If you look at hotel rooms and just the, the, the time it takes to get here. So it's a big proposition. You know, if you're looking at six to $8,000 for one person to travel, that's a, that's a big, um, big expense for a company. Uh, and so a lot of times they, they uh, will only come when they're, you know, um, very, very certain that they will have some, some level of, of success. Um, speaking of success, the biggest success we've had um, in my 10 years in India is 2019. We brought 150 SMEs to India in our trade winds event. Uh, and Secretary Ross um, uh, led that delegation. And, uh, you know, it, we had um, meetings not just in New Delhi, but in six other cities across India. Uh, they also went to ba uh, Bangladesh um, and, and Nepal. We we're supposed to go to Sri Lanka, but uh, Sri Lanka had just had the, had the bombing. Um, and it was so exciting to see the level of energy. Um, we've had a lot of success from that event. Um, I don't know that we'll have an, another event of that magnitude, um, but it was it was very um, very 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 powerful to bring have the secretary bring that many companies and and see them engage here in India. Um, so we, I look forward to your your questions. I, I do have to jump off just before seven thirty. Could I have another commitment then? Um, but look forward to working with you and uh, and hearing from the rest of the speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anandi. It's very interesting and very important uh, message you are given for uh, India. Uh, as you said, you know, the India is a really is a costly country, you said, but uh, we can say that India is costly, so that means we are growing more and more. 
Uh, and uh, of course, you know, as you said, that there are many SMEs from the USA. They are looking to explore business act activities in India. I can give you one assurance that on behalf of SME Chamber of India and our India uh, US SME Business Council that I can provide support and you know the handholding to the US company. Those are looking to invest in manufacturing industry or any other sector. I can provide them industrial land, industrial premises, ready-made industrial premises, a joint partner which is having the capacity for the manufacturing unit. Unit which you know US company should not you know spend money for a manufacturing in fact, uh, setting up the business or particularly uh, construction of the industry. We have uh, everything uh, ready made with us. Uh, rather, we have uh, a semi industrial parks of India where we are supporting any foreign company looking to uh, you know, Indian market, particularly in you know, various states, is, uh, you know, except Northeast states. We can provide a Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, even Bengal, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Punjab, all these states we have a branches and we can support. This is one. Second, very important, you know, I would like to you know, uh, understand from you during the Ambassador Catherine Tai, what is a two, three unique, you know, decision taken by the US government, which is a beneficial to enhance our bridge between India and US for economical development, particularly to inbound and outbound investment. Can we have a more uh, highlight on that, please? So, um, yes, yeah, so I, I think, uh, so we are, I'm primarily engaged with the U.S.-India Commercial Dialogue, which is the, um, you know, led by the U.S. Department of Commerce and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Um, and and we, um, we're in the process of shaping up um, work streams or, or themes for the, for the next version of the Commercial Dialogue. Uh, in the past, we've looked at ease of doing business factors. Um, to help uh, U.S. and Indian companies, uh, and then we also looked at a lot at standards um, because that's that's an issue that it it, it doesn't sound um, terribly exciting on the face of it, but it's it's really uh, I hear a lot from U.S. companies um, about standards issue. Um, so we'll be looking at um, similar themes uh, for the next version of the of the commercial dialogue. Um, but we really uh, we get a lot of input from um, U.S. and Indian companies to. Um, uh, tell us what what they need to 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 to, um, uh, to invest um, to trade to sell to uh, create partnerships um, and uh, you know because we very much recognize um, by working together um, two of the most vibrant democracies in the world um, can help our companies become more competitive um, sell to other countries across the world and and help increase their prosperity um, and so. Uh, stay tuned for the commercial dialogue, and uh, we are also recruiting for the U.S. Uh, version of the CEO forum. Um, uh, the deadline is April 6. Um, we we do have medium-sized companies on on the forum, um, so uh, the the voices of the SMEs is um, very much included in that. And the recommendations from the CEO forum very much feed into the commercial dialogue, um, and. Uh, so um, I, we, we hope to do the next one perhaps in the fall. We're look, we don't have any dates, but um, uh, logically it would probably be in the fall or, or later in 2022. Uh, we have received one question, very unique question from one of the government department that they are asking, what is the barriers are you know, faced by the US companies when they knock the door up for an investment purpose? What are the what are the barriers? What is the barriers? Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. So, um, so a, a, a U.S. company, a, a SME, they they need a lot of uh, handholding. Um, Invest India, I have to say, does a, a fantastic job. Um, any company that I've uh, uh, put in contact with Invest India has come back and said, "Wow, um, they, you know, Invest India has solved their problems." So, I think um, you are all very fortunate to have such a um, such a dynamic organization to to help them. Um, but uh, I, I have to say, a lot of times, U.S. SMEs they're, they're they're subject matter experts in that they know their technology, they they know their products, they know their industry. They're not as um, aware of of how to do business outside the United States. Um, and, and so that's where they need a partner such as us or Invest India. Um, there's a lot of consulting companies that that um, do this type of work as well um, to, to understand um, 
how how uh, how to how to do business. Um, but I, I know the Indian states are, um, you know, uh, increasingly competing for foreign investment, you know, including from the United States. And, um, you know, each state has, um, you know, a, a different packages or different, um, you know, ways of convincing companies to come and invest in their states. Um, so that is great to see. And it's um, in my time here, it's been great to see the different states kind of move up and down the, the various rankings. So, um, Yes, I, I, you know, I think that what what they need is is basically an entire like how to um, uh, uh, document. But you know, I tell them that the biggest decision they have is finding the right partner. Very few um, SMEs can come and just do business on their own. They need some sort of partnership. So maybe they they um, you know do a licensing of their technology, or maybe they have they set up a joint venture. Maybe you know there there's various ways of of doing that. Um, but uh, even a, even a big company really um, very rarely can succeed 100% on their own without some sort of partnership. Um, or um, yeah, it's, it's it's really success is really all about partnerships. Okay, good. Uh, and final question is, you know, you received from our more than at least 45 companies that what are the you know the U.S. companies? What, what kind of U.S. companies are exploring currently the business activity in India? Particularly during this pandemic, last two years, you must be received some interest from the U.S. companies that they are looking for a, set, a setting of business here, or they are looking to you know expand their business activity in India, uh, or manufacturing unit, or technology transfer. Like you know, the four or five sectors you can elaborate so that we can you know create interest amongst our membership that we can support. I know Invest India is one of the uh, leading organization in India, which is supporting Indian and foreign companies to explore business cooperation. So we'd like to know what are the segments and also the government is pushing the segment, which is, you know, to explore business and investment opportunity in India from your point of view. Sure. So I, I, I would say um, we, we have seen a dramatic decrease in the number of SMEs coming to us. Um, so we're uh, through the pandemic, and I, I think there's a variety of factors that might explain that. Um, but but uh, obviously, you um, the SMEs in the United States are facing, you know, uh, they have faced tremendous pressure, just like the companies on this call have. Um, so some of them are fighting for survival, and they can't think about doing business in India right now because they, you know, um, they're they're uh, with supply chain issues and what we're all, all companies are facing, just um, working through that. But um, uh, traditionally, uh, we've seen a lot of companies in the healthcare sector. Um, energy is another uh, big one. Renewable, battery storage, a lot of um, innovative um, uh, products. Um, uh, aviation and defense, of course, we have the big companies, but there's a lot of suppliers um, and and uh, you know um, up, up, upstream, downstream type companies um, that that are interested. Uh, and then environment and environmental technologies, which is also very very broad. Um, a number of that, them are interested, but. What I love about my job is every day there's you know um, you know new and different types of companies, uh, consumer products, um, all all sorts of industrial things, um, and I'm always learning about what they're doing, how they do business, what their product is. Uh, so given the breadth of our um, trade and and uh, economic and commercial relationship, um, it's it's uh, on any given day you're working on you know many kind of random things based on what companies want to do. But we are doing a lot of outreach, um, trying to get more companies interested, uh, and you know we're uh, kind of you know lear learning how to go back to this well this new virtual kind of hybrid world where some people are doing work in person, some some people are doing. Uh, work virtually, but we're very much sharing the message with U.S. companies. Please come to India. Flights are open, um, and the way to do business successfully, it really, you need to meet people face to face. So, hopefully, the health conditions will allow that to continue. Okay, thank you very much. Very interesting and very useful information presented by you, uh, friends. It was you know uh, Miss Island uh, Nandi who has given the very very you know drastic you know other uh, uh, you know very important uh, uh, information. Now let me present you, uh, Madam Sujha Menon, who is heading the our as a Minister of Indian Embassy in uh, Washington D.C. Madam, with my first question to you that. Uh, with your you know, with the question, I will start your introduction. That what is the unique initiatives taken by Indian Embassy to provide a value addition services, handholding, and encouraging Indian companies and SMEs to enter in US market? Thank you. Morning from uh, Washington DC. Uh, thank you, Chandrakant. It's a pleasure to uh, join all of you. 
Uh, good to see you, Eileen. I think you have stolen most of my uh, uh, TPs uh, and you too, Chandrikant. But uh, uh, before I you know, come to what we have done, I think I'll make some broad points and of course I'll be happy to take more questions. Eileen, uh, I would uh, start with where you stopped in the sense you talk about, you know, success is all about partnerships. And I think uh, the currently the way world is going, I think nothing is more uh, true. I think it's all about collaboration, cooperation and partnership. Uh, Chandrikant, you also spoke about, you know, the 400 billion uh, trade target, which we have achieved, the exports that we have achieved. Prime Minister has specifically uh, congratulated the farmers and small businesses and entrepreneurs for being uh, able to do this. And, uh, you know, one, uh, one fifth, nearly one fifth of our total exports actually go to the U.S. And uh, most of them, of course, uh, come from the small and medium uh, business enterprise sector. And uh, when we talk about, you know, the comprehensive global strategic partnership between India and the United States, uh, we always say this, it's not just between the two governments, it's much beyond. It's about the private sector, it's about the investors, it's about the industry, it's about the academia, intelligentsia, civil society, small businesses, all, all put together. It's a story which is much beyond uh, the two governments. Uh, in terms of, you know, some of the important things that have happened in the last, uh, you know, two years or so, you spoke about the TPF, the Trade Policy Forum. In fact, the meeting itself was important in the sense that it happened after a gap of almost four years. And, uh, you know, some of the market access issues on both sides, uh, which have been there for, for, for uh, probably uh, decades, we have been able to resolve. We are very happy about it. Uh, we are happy that uh, Indian mangoes and pomegranates would soon be available uh, in the U.S. from the next season. Uh, similarly, uh, the U.S. pork uh, will be available uh, in India, also cherries and alfalfa. We also look forward to having the table grapes uh, from India soon uh, in the U.S. We are working on those issues. So it's a very important start. I mean, it's of course, uh, India-U.S. commercial uh, and economic partnership, uh, it has improved over the years, both sides. Uh, but we see that there is a lot of potential uh, to do more. If you look at how our strategic partnership has grown uh, over the years, I think uh, there is a lot of potential to do catching up, if I can be candid, uh, amongst friends. Uh, just to give you, I don't want you to bore with statistics. All of you know it very well. SME sector is the backbone uh, for, for our economy. It's, it's an engine of uh, growth and uh, innovation. Uh, you spoke about, of course, women's participation. Uh, we have 20% of our SMEs which are women owned. Uh, uh, it's, it's one of the largest employment generators uh, in the country. Uh, in fact, one third of our GDP comes from, uh, the, uh, from SMEs. More than half the exports goes from uh, the SMEs. So it's a very, very important uh, part of the entire uh, Indian economic ecosystem, so to speak. Coming to what can we do or what has actually happened, there is a lot which has happened uh, again during the pandemic and we are happy about it. You know, companies like Google uh, have tied up with uh, SIDB, the Small Industries Development Bank of India, in terms of making the credit uh, finance available uh, to the SMEs. Uh, companies like Walmart actually have done uh, a lot of sourcing from India. You know, they've already announced 10 billion by 2027, mostly from, again, the SMEs. Uh, we have done a lot of B2Bs. Uh, I think uh, probably, you know, uh, you know, more than 100 B2Bs at the embassy level. And of course, if you add all our five consulates in the US uh, in various uh, sectors, it would be much more. Uh, Ambassador has had a good conversation with the Small Business Administrator Isabel Guzman uh, recently uh, in, in January in terms of what more could, we could do in this sector. You also spoke about uh, Eileen, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, you know, CEO forum. We look forward, of course, to having the commercial dialogue and CEO forum soon. Uh, but having said that, I some level, you know, you also mentioned about the 2019 visit where, you know, Secretary brought in a lot of SMEs from the U.S. If we could set up a similar structure for the small and medium uh, business sector as in a, a small business forum, uh, I think that would be an important, uh, that would be an important step in bringing the both the SMEs on both sides uh, together. So what do basically the SMEs need? They need, uh, uh, you know, in my limited understanding, three things. One is, of course, the credit. Uh, the second is, of course, material for their products. And then third, they need markets for their products. So I think in all these three things, uh, you know, we at the mission have tried to probably connect. Our life is all about, you know, uh, being facilitators, being able to connect uh, people on both sides. Uh, 
uh, uh, you know, we do we try and do that matchmaking to the extent possible, of course, given the constraints of a, of a, of a virtual world. But uh, of course, happy to do more in terms of more B2B meetings if there are, uh, you know, if someone is looking for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, importers on the US side, we get a lot of, of course, uh, trade queries, we, we, we try and answer them. Uh, and of course, we'll be happy to do more B2Bs, more uh, road shows, uh, you know, for our companies in the US. And if there are, you know, I always say this, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of appetite for uh, inputs and uh, information. If there are any suggestions on how we can do this uh, better, we, we welcome those, uh, you know, ideas and take it forward from there. So, uh, you know, Prime Minister has uh, reiterated his focus on the three T's, the trade, technology and tourism. In all these three sectors, we find that SMEs can play a very important role. And uh, in that way, of course, uh, small is actually big, uh, you know, in, in, in every sense. I would like to stop here and would be happy to take more questions. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Menon. Uh, it's very interesting and rather I'm happy to inform you yesterday only we have form one SME uh, CEO forum, particularly to building bridge between India and US. It's very interesting and both of you mentioned about that. So I'll be very happy to receive uh, no, official support from both of you because the large corporates CEO can talk about, you know, the policy. They can talk about, you know, the development and other industrial. But the CEO, SME CEO forum will be useful, particularly for the companies who are looking for handholding, companies looking for identifying the uh, emerging market, companies looking for you know, finding the partners because SME sector are a vital sector and they are providing large employment so we will definitely you know take advantage of you know us commercial services and indian embassy where we can support we can encourage the indian companies to go global uh, to set up business in usa set up business in india uh, madam i would like to have one question about you know particularly during your tenure or uh, our uh, indian embassy what are the you know uh, loopholes or what are the issues identified when Indian SMEs are doing business in USA, because I want to give a message through this webinar that US, US country is the best for a business, best for investment, or best for a developing cooperation. So sometimes Indian SMEs are failure, sometimes Indian SMEs face the problem. So what is your message we can you know, convey to the industries that these are the you know issues you should tackle, you should you know avoid, and you should you know go ahead with the with the right partners. What is your thoughts on this? See, uh, uh, Chandrikant, it's like this. I think we have a lot of strengths as far as the Indian SME sector is concerned because you know we manufacture quality products at relatively less cost, and we offer I think uh, incredible technology solutions uh, to of course the US and the rest of the world. Uh, where we have a challenge, uh, if I can use that term, is, uh, you know, uh, the U.S. is a very regulated market. The, it's very legalistic in terms of, you know, operations. So, uh, you know, for example, uh, the, if you look at the, uh, our exports uh, in, the, in the food and drug sector, both, you know, in the pharma and, of course, uh, the food, we have a lot of rejections from FDA. And why does that happen? It could be a small thing in terms of, you know, packaging, in terms of labeling you know, in terms of re those requirements. So, in fact, I'm happy to share here that we did, uh, you know, uh, a, a seminar, a webinar for educating our Indian exporters. We had a legal expert uh, from the US who actually walked through the entire system in terms of how we can take this and then do better. So, small things here and there, I think, can go a long way in actually being able to understand because, you know, you have to understand your market, you have to understand your customers. That's very important. So I think that's that's one aspect probably that uh, we can uh, we can keep in mind, and two, you know, we are also now doing a lot uh, in the niche sectors. You know, of course, Eileen also mentioned this. There are a lot of small exporters from India uh, who want to, uh, you know, who have, who have all these uh, interesting things like in the in the defense and aerospace, for example, helmets, protective gear, yeah, you know, uh, small small uh, you know products, but these are important ones. Uh, in terms of us being able to reach out to the right, uh, you know, importers in the, in those niche sectors, I think is again something which we have found, uh, you know, a bit of difficulty. Uh, having said that, I think organizations like, uh, you know, Eileen, you would know this better, SIDO, the uh, state industrial development uh, organization, which brings together all the uh, U.S. states. So it's like a one-stop shop, you know, with one, you know, you can reach all the 50 U.S. states. 
I think uh, they, we have tried doing that in terms of, uh, you know, how the things, how we could work out those. The uh, industry organizations uh, in the US, like the US IBC, the US ISPF, they have also been incredible. They were part of the US chambers. I mean, they have done a fantastic job in terms of, you know, handholding with the with the embassy. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, and also being able to survive, uh, as Eileen and Chandrikant, you also mentioned uh, in this, uh, you know, during this pandemic. Uh, you know, we don't know how, of course, we keep our fingers crossed in terms of BA2 variant, etc. But now that things have opened up, you know, things are mostly in person or hybrid. Uh, there is a lot of potential to do more, and I hope, uh, you know, this in terms of uh, you know, supply chain resiliency, uh, in terms of the recent geopolitical and geoeconomic developments, we can make use of these and actually try and do a lot of lot more uh, together. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Joseph Levas from USA, from Miami, and uh, we have Ajay Jha from uh, Denver. Uh, Mr. Jagdali is from Pune. So let us explore the you know now open the uh, open discussion. Uh, Joe, your question to both the dynamic ladies. Did we lose Miss Eileen? I know she was up yes. against it there. Yes, you can go ahead. No, um, my it's really my comment. It's uh, it's actually very gratifying to hear. Um, my uh, I my first visit to India was twenty two years ago, and uh, and my you know I'm fortunate and blessed to have built uh, four software SMEs uh, with uh, people from India and Indian Americans together. But um, it's. If I can sum up what the role of the India US SME Business Council is, is exactly what uh, Ms. Eileen uh, said there. It's, it's, if I'm an Indian SME wanting to do business in the US or a US SME wanting to do business in India, and I don't know where to go, you know? Um, and I think that is basically what we're hearing now. Um, or I go and I say, this is fantastic. Now, what do I, what do I do? Um, you know, what is that next step? Um, I was in Riyadh uh, three weeks ago and I was on the sky bridge of the Kingdom Tower. Everyone knows that very distinctive tower. And I met it and it was the defense show going on. And I met uh, uh, an owner of a defense, uh, aerospace defense company uh, from India. And I had a few words with him and he goes about the council. And he goes, that, that's absolutely what I need. You know, so, you know, SMEs are, are the backbone. We all understand that, but it's also a very difficult market to penetrate. So I'll say something on my dear friend Shandakhan's behalf is he has spent 30 years building this incredible organization in India, which is now 15,000 strong. What we're doing on the U.S. side is doing the same thing with our US SMEs so we can do this very powerful cross mapping of if we're in the packaging industry, these are your like numbers in India. You know, if you're in the uh, healthcare industry, Miss Eileen's back, all right, great. Then that can at least give the head start. And if we can create these, these relationships, these introductions, then the council can help keep them going when you get back within your four walls, because I know more than anybody building companies that that's what happens. You get back in your business and you can't look outside of it as an entrepreneur. So you need a facilitation, you need, you know, a, a helping hand, you need, if anything, a concierge service uh, to help you on a number of different matters. So, uh, you know, hats off to you ladies that are doing this. I love the story there about the legal issues in the United States. You know, I, I tell Shandra Khan all the time, if I came to India, I wouldn't know how to set up a business in Mumbai. You know, I, I, I wouldn't know the, the first thing. And I'm a pretty educated global businessman coming to India for 22 years, right? So these are the kind of concierge services we believe that we're trying to craft uh, for our India US Business Council and is packageable that we can give to the SMEs on both sides of the council. So I don't really need to give an address because your lady, you two ladies through your different stories have already kind of set the framework for what we can give. But I just wanted to say that I'll let the other two gentlemen ask some questions here and we'll continue on with the conversation because I think it's very good. 
Uh, Madam Eileen, you said about, you know, particularly the technological alliance with the Indian companies. You know, we are here, you know, Mr. Rajendra Jagdale, who is heading the science and technology park. Let me bring him to uh, now to, you know, share his thoughts and what is your, you know, uh, in mind going on when Ms. Eileen was telling about, you know, cooperation, especially for the technology related. Thank you, Chandrakanji, for organizing this uh, very wonderful webinar. And I'm so excited because I have a lot to share about my experiences of working in US. Uh, I, I, I have been uh, volunteering and visiting US a number of times, and I have office in Silicon Valley, both East Coast and West Coast, especially in um, RTP, this is Triangle Park, uh, and in, in Silicon Valley in, in, in San Jose. I have lost a lot of money and I have gained a lot of money, both. So, but overall, uh, there's, there's a gain, uh, though not though a not lot of gain, but there's a gain. I, I, uh, I used to manage one hedge fund in uh, San Jose, $180 million hedge fund, which I've closed, and we have just launched one more hedge fund of $400 million. It's basically a pre IPO investment fund in US. Uh, of course, 20% of that we can invest outside US. Uh, so, but my major passion is that how do we bring technologies from US to India and technologies from US to, to from India to US. Uh, in, unfortunately, it's not happening uh, bilaterally. Getting technologies from US to India is easy, but getting technologies from India to US, I find very difficult. Sometimes the technologies may be far better. They are important, and they are important for you even in US. But there's there's some kind of resistance in in taking technology from India to US. I have failed personally. Uh, my experience is that there's a lot of scope to do matchmaking. From uh, I work in startup space. I have groomed and established, and I have personally invested in 183 companies, and uh, some of the companies have grown to several million dollars. So having that experience, I, I have set up what is called as India Welcome Centers in Europe. There are 11 India Welcome Centers in Asia. These are networking uh, activities between uh, incubators in those regions. So any startup looking for an opportunity in those countries, uh, they go to India Welcome Center six months to one year, depending on the need. The office is provided free. There's no charge. And mm -hmm. after that six months or one year period, they have to pay uh, modest uh, incubation charges. But they're, most of them, they are treated as the local companies. All the fiscal incentives, uh, which are offered to European companies or Asian companies, there are 18, uh, 11, uh, sorry, 18, uh, India Welcome Centers in Asia Pacific region through our network called RB Asian Association Business Incubators. So something like this has not happened. I've tried a lot between US and US and India. Why not set up Indo-US uh, startup welcome centers? I am willing to give offices free for if startup from US want to explore opportunities in India at least at 50 different locations across India within our startup, uh, the incubator network. But same, we expect that to happen uh, uh, with US. Uh, my job is made very simple by Lebas. Uh, what happens is once, when I started uh, doing some business in US, I didn't know I was lost. Same thing that happens in Europe. Because doing business in India, and being, uh, doing business outside India is very different. So there's some kind of orientation program of one week offered by the counterpart, how to do business in US. What are the fiscal incentives possible? What are the lo local laws? Because uh, um, it's not like India. The local laws in US for every county, they're they probably that different. Uh, here it is very simple. So for me, it was very difficult uh, to understand that. But uh, why can't we sit at the US Startup Welcome Center in India? And similarly, startup welcome center, India startup welcome center in US, that's possible, and give this a free mentoring for startups who want to explore opportunities there. Then some, of course, in 
we have also done what is called startup co um, um, in incubation. In a sense, some startup suppose wants to come from US to India, they don't know how to do it. They would require a local partner. And this together set up a new venture, new startup in India. Similarly, we can do in, in US. Uh, I have uh, several examples to share and success stories also to share. But th that's possible to do it. The one other thing that we are looking at, we are also looking for a large scale partnership program with not only in the US, but many other countries to set up large scale innovation clusters, maybe Greenfield or existing clusters. Uh, we want to partnership, uh, for example, with uh, so there are 11 uh, science parks within Research Triangle Park network. So some of the science park may be keen to come to India to set up a joint large scale, say 2000 hectare or 4000 hectare science parks. So such a green field science parks uh, are possible and we'll be more than happy. I would be personally more than happy to facilitate this uh, if U US innovation clusters are very keen to come to India to set up a joint. So this will, of course, they facilitate uh, growth of a lot of SMEs there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. Ajay ji, you are also exploring many uh, startups and SMEs. What's your thoughts on this? Thank you. Thank you for organizing this event. And uh, this is just on time after the COVID. So we are gearing towards, uh, you know, much more partnership and looking uh, forward for the opportunity. I'll just give you a gist what uh, uh, Mr. Jagdale was talking and uh, Aline and uh, Suja has mentioned that, um, you know, uh, there is a lot of trouble. Um, we, every state has our own way of doing, uh, you know, economic development and trade. So we have a specific mandate. And if you come through the state, uh, also there is a, uh, there's a county is giving some incentive and some kind of proposition. Then you come to the city, city is providing, and then certain ways of where your partnership comes through. So a lot of these things are you know, very complicated sometimes. Um, and that's what our INOP Global is providing support in terms of really visualizing what is the need of the country exist. Okay. So every state you go, uh, you'll have to follow the rule and regulation and try to do the incentives. So that's why um, our center is trying to help. And that's why uh, uh, we, we uh, partnered with Chandrakanji to provide those information right on time so that you don't lose time and opportunity. Um, one thing um, is happening right now um, that a startup is getting very closer now uh, because of the investment, because of also technology transfer aspect. Uh, they are much more knowledgeable. Uh, startup India and Digital India today uh, compared to any other uh, sector, you know. Um, and when we talk about the startup India and startup US, we are much more closer every day, every minute. And they are much more connected because um, our connection is uh, whether it is going through the clubhouse or whether you are going through a uh, different kind of Instagram and other uh, social media platform. So we are very active connected there. Um, and uh, some of the organization like uh, SME, uh, Chamber of India, and the council here, and our Indo-US uh, uh, business council and the chambers, what we are looking for right now, and I think uh, where Eileen and Suja is a, is a great instrumental um, to help, is, is to creating, uh, you know, sector-wise, um, some kind of a forum where people can ask the question. I, I was just looking at the question about a protein, plant protein, somebody's talking, somebody's talking about the question related to uh, how they are going to ship a specific product. If it is possible to start a dialogue forum uh, at each sector, that would be a great way to go. And second is also, which I think Joe was also mentioning, uh, you know, American companies are lost when they go there and they don't know where to go. Landing in Delhi, uh, I was with the governor of, uh, you know, Colorado governor landing in Delhi and Mumbai and Bangalore, we went. We met all the bigger company. Uh, we, 
Uh, we met uh, Reliance, we met uh, Tata, we met uh, all those companies, uh, Mahindra Tech and all. Um, but these are all known company. They are already existing and, and they can do by themselves. They are themselves like a country. Uh, what happens to the small and medium enterprise uh, that they, they don't have a hand holding really in any part of the world in the right way. So this forum is coming is, is a good way because our economy in the U.S. also, uh, what Eileen was mentioning, 90% is coming from the SME. Be without that, we won't survive as a country. And, and same with India. Um, a little bit more uh, disorganized. Uh, we have a much more organized and a policy and everything, but there's a lot of learning is possible. So we are here. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, rather, uh, both the dynamic lady want to uh, you know, leave at 7.30. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would like to request uh, and I would like to announce today that uh, the in SME Chamber of India and India US SME Business Council jointly with Indian SME, uh, Federation of Indian SME Association, which is heading more than 3,200 associations. Those are working for uh, SME sector in India. Now, uh, let me announce in both, both the ladies uh, that we have started SME CEO forum, bridge between India and US, particularly to explore strategic partnership with the interested companies. And also, we will focus on the sector wise, as Ajay ji and uh, Suja ji and Agla ji said, that we'll, we will you know, uh, focus sector wise and we will create a very unique system and where they can get a guidance, either US company or your Indian companies, we will start working. And the first step, I am going to take a delegation, large delegation, Ms. Eileen, that we will be attending Select USA. And I'll take a help of Sujaji to organize you know, uh, roundtable meetings in various cities in US so that this can be a uh, outcome for this uh, webinar today. So, uh, you know, uh, before closing uh, the, you know, from this, uh, this webinar, I would like to request uh, Sujaji to give you closing remarks. I think, uh, you know, wonderful, uh, actually, ideas from uh, Rajendra Jagdali ji and, uh, of course, Ajay Jha ji. I think it was, uh, I think you, you actually put a lot of meat uh, on the table in terms of ideas and what more we could do together. Of course, startup is a different world in itself, I think, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the digital being the priority, we all you know, it's, it's it's just not in our profession, our everyday life in the last two years, we have seen uh, the importance of, uh, you know, the technology. So digital innovation, uh, uh, startups, I think uh, as two societies, uh, uh, India and US who respect uh, ingenuity and innovation, I think there is a lot that we can do together. Uh, we have done a lot of work in the startups uh, space as well. We, I mean, the mission and the consulates. Uh, we have brought together startups from both sides, but in terms of actually putting the, together an ecosystem uh, and a structural platform, so to speak, which you have rightly mentioned, Chandragamji, I think it's a very, very timely initiative. From, from the from the mission side, I can I can assure you that uh, you know do let us know when when you are planning this visit. We would be happy to tie up in partnership with all our consulates here in the US. Select USA uh, is an important organization. We know them well. Uh, so uh, we would we would be happy to take forward all these uh, ideas and uh, initiatives. And uh, you have my coordinates. I mean, some of my some of the uh, attendees today, I think, have asked for the email IDs, etc. Please feel free. We will share. We will share that. Uh, we can. We we will uh, we we will take take it forward from there. So I hope uh, the year ahead uh, would be a year of prosperity, uh, peace, and stability uh, for all of us. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ailin ji, you know, the, the point is, you know, particularly most of Indians, when they get a US visa, they are very, very, very much happy, you know, uh, they got, a, you know, entry in US, that means they are lucky. So what is your thoughts, you know, particularly to inviting Indian companies to go global, to go USA and to explore business opportunity? What is your message to them? Uh, yeah, so um, the United States is the most welcoming country in the world. Um, we have, uh, we're the number one investment destination uh, because we have uh, open markets with the least amount of uh, regulation um, and it's uh, open and transparent, uh, very easy to, to do business. 
uh, and companies do well. Uh, you see a lot of companies in a wide range, you know, big companies, little companies from all over the world uh, that thrive in the United States. So I'm very happy to hear that you'll be taking a delegation to Select USA. Um, I'm sorry I, I won't be there uh, because I'll be transitioning this summer, uh, but I'll be sending good vibes. And I know uh, it's, it, it, it truly is an incredible event um, and uh, I, I enjoy attending the years that I go. I, I quickly want to just um, address the SME forum idea. This, this is something that we've tried multiple times. And when we um, had the trade winds um, delegation, we did a special event um, and invited all 150 companies to attend uh, to, to gauge the interest of, of, of U.S. companies. And I, there was there is no traction after that. And I, I think it just speaks to the SMEs being uh, overextended uh, and they don't have the bandwidth to, to, to take something like that on. Um, so I think if you were to explore um, uh, you know, uh, a, a virtual platform where, where companies could connect then and maybe something more organically could happen. Um, I very much see the need for uh, U.S. and Indian SMEs to connect um, without us connecting them. Um, but it's, it's the, the fact is both our, com both our um, SMEs are, you know, uh, they, they, don't, they don't have the bandwidth to, to sit in these forums or uh, participate in kind of extraneous activities. So that, that was the lesson learned. Um, but I think technology can help save the day. So maybe one of your tech companies will um, identify a solution to help make the magic happen. Uh, but thank you so much for inviting me. Um, Suja, great to see you. Look forward to seeing you in DC this summer. Thank you. Thank you, Aliji. Thank you very much. And I hope that we will receive the same uh, positive response and, you know, we have a uh, very uh, highly response from the uh, U.S. Embassy, particularly for you know, exploring business opportunity in the U.S. market. We have started already working with Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and you know South Carolina to exploring the business and you know investment cooperation for Indian company. Because when we have started working for last six months, we have received more than at least you know 150 companies interest that they are looking for uh, setting up business in USA. So we will definitely take advice. Uh, you know, advice from both the ladies and we will take, take it forward. We will continue our discussion and uh, bo both would like to leave because they have some uh, you know, other uh, commitment. So thank you very much on behalf of my members, participants and chamber and particularly for, you know, providing, uh, you know, uh, the you know positive response to my members and particularly to organization for exploring the further opportunities. Thank you very much, Eileen. Thank you, Sujaji. L look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you. We will very continue much. the discussion. So, friends, uh, it was very uh, wonderful discussion with the two dynamic ladies. Now, I would like to bring in Joseph uh, Lebas to you know share about you know when we talk about investment in USA, what are the avenues, what are the you know opportunities, and how I can you know think for invest in USA, either you know be a investor or be a you know immig immigrant or how we can do Joe. No, thanks, Dr. Kant. Uh, you know, I, I I wanted to to stress something that that we didn't really cover here, and uh, that's capital as well. Uh, so when we're talking about um, perhaps taking our business overseas, uh, the big thing is capital. Okay, and you hit on it right there with investment. Okay, so let's let's envision that I'm an Indian SME. And I want to um, set up an affiliate, uh, or I want to create a joint venture um, in in the U.S. Uh, an investment along those ways, right? Uh, now, uh, at some point, I'm going to have to move uh, to manage that investment. Not all the time, but let's just envision that I'm really going to go into this, and I'm going to uh, set up an affiliate. I'm going to set up a manufacturing plant. I'm going to set up a a technology uh, office there, and I'm going to move, perhaps I'm going to move my family to take uh, advantage of the world-class education uh, that is in the, that still is in the United States, top, top drawer university system for my family. So the good news is there is uh, a, a lot of advantages there. Um, what we are working on as a council, let's just start with the business. Uh, the council, uh, under Shana Khan's leadership in India and what we're doing here on state side is availing a lot of, um, funding through, 
uh, available to SMEs on Indian banks as you move over. So uh, let's start with that. Um, if I am an Indian SME and I want to establish uh, a U.S. Uh, affiliate, there are a number of Indian banks that have already indicated, and I have met with these as well, that they would be interested in, 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 uh, in forwarding uh, an expansion loan. That helps you because if you go to the states, you are still a new entity and you are not even a legal resident yet. So it will be much harder for you to get a loan initially. Now let's get to the second piece. How do I become a legal resident? I'm sure everyone on this call has heard about the various visa options, uh, especially the big one, EB-5. Uh, there's various other ones we can discuss in a, in a more focused discussion, but the very good news now is the EB-5 program has just been codified, uh, signed into law by the president in most recent weeks, March 11th to be exact. Um, the, 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 we are basically putting this all as a package of services to, together as the council. Now, the good news about the council is we be a very objective strategic advisory to our members and and basically we don't have a dog in the hunt to use an american term right uh we don't have to say this is the project we want we could advise and say this is probably what's best for you as you come to the country i'll give you the highlights uh it's it's an eight hundred thousand dollar investment for for um for an eb5 visa um now that's locked down for the next five years uh the good news though is it is now there is some preferential treatment now to investing in projects that are not city-based, uh, rural-based, which if you think about it now, if you do want to set up a, an affiliate uh, in the United States that is anything really, uh, except having a downtown loft suite for a technology company, uh, more desirable for, manufacturing packaging auto you know basically anything even if you wanted to have a loft suite call it 30 miles outside of a city center uh anything outside of a large high-rise hotel in the middle of a city center is now more or less being considered rural and those are given set asides in the new eb5 bill so you will go to for lack of a better word front of the line in processing um, you'll also now, if you now apply those jobs in setting up your new affiliates, you don't have to go through a regional center. So there are some really good new wrinkles in this new bill, which is now codified for five years where the previous bills were kind of just done by year and renewed and renewed and renewed. They give you better predictability in immigration. Okay. Now. What about when we get there? Now, as we've been talking about for the last hour, there's linkages, there's joint ventures, there's channelization of, of, of finance that is all available now. Uh, as we look at US SMEs, I know Eileen made some very good points and, and Indian SMEs are the same way, right? We're all running our businesses. So you need a partner that can basically help make these connections work while you're running your business. Because I believe we're done with COVID, but guess what happened? We entered this, this fracas. Well, it's a, it's a full scale role or it's not a fracas. And then what's gonna be after that? I think that volatility is our next normal. So if we wait for the next thing to be over, there's gonna be a next thing. So, um, we have to plan for disruption in our businesses. I believe that's what, unfortunately, this next era of civilization is going to be. So growth, I think um, um, Suja's point, only 2% only, uh, of business being done overseas, it's a tremendous opportunity for the SMEs that wanna push and grow. So I believe investment in the US for SMEs can be done through capital, can be done investment, can be done in the right locations of the U.S. There are several low tax states. If you look at the migration patterns uh, of the U.S., they're, be, they're exiting the north high tax. You know, we saw in COVID a lot of, 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 of restriction 
um, on small medium businesses. And actually those businesses voted with their feet. They left and they went to areas that were low tax, low restriction, higher job growth, less unions, and those businesses are flourishing, right? So we can help give you the data to make your own decisions. But I'll tell you the old traditional thoughts on where to go in the US have changed. And, uh, you know, being nimble, being flexible, as we all know, as SMEs works to our advantage right now. So I would say, again, the United States is still the strongest, most durable market in these very volatile times. India is emerging as the most durable, strongest partner for the United States. It's not lost on a lot of SMEs here. We know that from a price quality and political reason, China is not a friend, especially what's happened over the last month. So the linkage is there. And all it takes is for us to look outside our four walls and make it. Good. Uh, yep. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Jagdale ji, when uh, any entrepreneur, particularly SME sector, those are having turnovers like a 50 to 100 crores, and they would like to go for you know technological alliance or acquiring advanced technology or particularly going for a you know, technology transfer. What is your experience of what you would like to mention particularly to the you know SME perspective? Those are you know hungry for advanced technology because. We have to compete China. We have to compete, you know, even Japan, Korea, European countries. As you said, you know, we want to even export technology to USA. So how Indian SMEs can be prepared or can be advised when they go for this kind of activities? Your thoughts? See, my experience getting technologies from US is rather easy. Hmm. But I have found it very difficult to take technologies from India to US. Uh, I have a lot of experiences to share in this. Uh, first thing is I, I feel that US feel that we don't require technologies from outside outside US. That's that has been the ego. Sorry Libas <laughs> for uh, <laughs> saying this. That has been the ego I have been facing. Because we, 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 we have everything. We don't need, need anything from out, outside ah. US. And uh, even though I, I have got, gone with large number of technologies which are not there in US, but I found it very difficult to penetrate. Of course, when we go with investment, of course, you are most welcome to come with your own technology, set up your own manufacturing and do the business. But pure transfer of technology, it's very difficult. Uh, getting technologies from US to India is pretty simple. I have done that. I have dozen of experiences where uh, we have got technologies from there. And on a purely on licensing terms, we have got the technologies here. So that's that. So uh, I operate from San Jose, one in, uh, accelerator called Trivium, and where we have taken Indian startups there and they have been very successful. See, when, when I used to mentor some of these startups from US in Trivium, uh, I thought why, so I uh, asked Trivium team to come to Pune and I had a lined up startups to um, uh, expose them. They said, every company from here has a potential of taking technologies to US. <laughs> because they, they're so great. And some of the founders of Trivium invested in these companies here but finally, I found it very difficult to take uh, these uh, this startups to US. Uh, so, I, of course, I have in, I have personally invested in a lot of uh, companies in US, maybe up to almost 25, 26 million dollar investment I have done. Uh, I was offered a green card. I never opted for a green card because I, I, I would never get time to settle in US. Uh, but I think, but I think with with a what is happening now, global um, political scenario, uh, we are coming closer to US. And uh, this is an opportunity to explore deeper 
possibility of relationship between technology transfer. Okay. You know, the, this is very interesting because uh, the US market always, you know, are look after by the, you know, the Chinese, Japanese and other companies. But now the Indians are coming ahead. And, you know, the, we have here Ajay Jha, uh, who has, you know, a long, long time experience and, you know, having the, you know, practical experience and practical knowledge about how we can, you know, tap the uh, potential opportunity. Ajayji, what is your, you know, message to the Indian SMEs, particularly those are looking to invest in US, those are looking to explore business opportunity, and those are looking to have a strategic partnership with the US companies. Thank you, Chandrakanji. I, I think Joe has talked more um, about what what is the process to get into US marketplace. Um, I'll give a very perspective of, uh, I'm here in Colorado, so I, I always look at uh, this Western coast and mid coast um, away from East coast side. Um, but I'll give you a perspective that America is also very much diverse and it's so much expanded in terms of, you know, um, even we talk same language. I don't talk like a Florida guys or guys in Texas. So, um, so you have to understand that we have also a lot of diversity here. And we'll be friends, Ajay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, the problem is basically that, um, not every platform provide the right information at the right time in the right place and the right partnership attitude. Uh, so this is a kind of, you know, everybody has a chamber, this, uh, you know, different forum. Um, so the information goes, but how do you validate those information and how much you can, um, you know, make a valuation because I work in a startup world. I always say that three things I look for. One is authenticity. One is uh, validation and valuation. And last is a tenacity. If all these things exist, then we work together. And if it is not there, then probably the companies are not in the right path. And so um, when we look out for any, you know, Indian companies come here, it's Alice in Wonderland. It's a good to come as a, you know, consignment, uh, you know, the trade delegation. And I have gone many trade de delegation around the world. Uh, the governor always like in every state to take the trade delegation and promote their state for the investment. So um, my experience. As what, is your, what is your thoughts on you know, particular sectors now? Because okay. in India, you are, you know, the plenty of sectors, which sector can, you know, think about to enter in US market. So I think, uh, you know, I, I can tell you right now, health and clean tech is the two areas, which is a very uh, much at the top level. And then we have a food, everything what India grows. Uh, America like to have a more value added product here. So if you talk from, uh, you know, yogi tea uh, to any kind of ashwagandha, you talk about any kind of, you know, nutraceuticals product and food product, which is giving a much more better, um, you know, immunity. This is the way people are going. And so we like to have that one uh, pretty much. Second is, uh, you know, education uh, is a one, one area. There is a lot of things that are happening. And it is not only the university, but there is a lot of other smaller unit wanted to work with India to provide. Just talk about this, um, uh, especially about the US-India uh, transaction. Not a lot of people knows how the country like US is working, even the state by state rules and regulation. So um, I, I think for the time being, uh, I will tell about Colorado right now, okay? We are the next Silicon Valley of food uh, and nutrition. Um, also Silicon Valley of uh, aerospace engineering and technology. We, we are getting into the top level. And uh, we are also from IT. Uh, if you talk about all major company of India, it exists in Denver, Colorado. So you talk about Mahindra Tech, you talk about TCS, you talk about um, uh, Wipro, you talk about, you know, uh, the the Tata, all the groups are here, um, and uh, and and they are they are growing, and and there is also medium company exist because there is a lot of technology service um, company exists, which is a software. 
uh, there's a lot of companies which is working uh, in terms of supplying uh, food material, nutrition material, uh, some of the herbal material which is coming um, to processing because we have a, a kind of a food value and nutrition value from Denver to Boulder. I think, Joe, you know that these are three areas, Fort Collins, um, Boulder and Denver. Uh, this is called the food and nutrition value of West right now um, because we have all uh, major commodity from California which is a food growing uh, in Florida, of course, uh, where you are, uh, Joe. Uh, and this is a major transaction. But since we are looking at, uh, you know, distributed energy is a big crisis. We are talking about the green energy. Uh, we are promoting urban food farm, vertical food farm all across the country, which is we require because of the supply chain problem, um, because of other energy crisis and everything. So I think I'll say the health sector is one. Uh, another sector is the food and nutrition. Uh, third sector is the aerospace engineering and IT and service sector. Um, hospitality sector, the tourism is coming after the COVID because um, uh, of the COVID, like two and a half years, people trying to jump in and, you know. So See, Ajayji, my, my interest and my members' interest is how we will compete or how we will take over the market created by the China and US because India is a becoming manufacturing hub and next 10 years you will find the all the world manufacturing companies will come here and to you know to manufacture product in India okay we are also setting up small types of you know SME industry parks so this is a huge opportunity in India you are from Bihar you know uh, Bihar is also flooding very well so my point is how we can support Indian companies to enter in US market by not only investment, but you know, starting with a bigger, unless until you will not taste something, you will not give experience. So we first, we will encourage our SMEs to taste the market, go to the market, enjoy the, you know, the, the hospitality of the market and understand what is uh, available for them according to your business, according to your sector, then only it is possible. Meher, you be ready. I would like to ask you a question about, you know, what are the trade barriers and where the SME can take advantage or the, you know, incentives point. Uh, Joe, I would like to uh, come back to you again. Meanwhile, my Meher is ready. Uh, what is your observation last six months? Which state is encouraging Indian companies more, particularly zero, zero tax, or particular low tax, you know, uh, the states who those are having, and which sector we can, you know, uh, give a message to the Indian companies to enter in that market. What is your thoughts on this? Yeah, no, I, I agree with with Ajay that that Colorado has really come on with technology. I think there's there's a brain drain from California uh, in technology for sure. That uh, several states, well, really only a few are being the beneficiary of Colorado, Utah, and Texas being being the main beneficiaries of that brain drain. Um, I think if you look across the manufacturing, um, the packaging industries, even the pharmaceutical industries, uh, the southern states have been very aggressive uh, in, in terms of, of low or no taxation. Um, you know, if you look at the, the predominant Indian manufacturing companies, uh, we've seen them. I've met with them in India as well in Pune. Uh, that have already been successful in the Carolinas, North and South Carolinas. Um, South Carolina has almost no tax. They've, they've floated the idea of zero tax. Uh, Tennessee has zero tax. Florida, of course, has zero tax. Um, Georgia has a small tax. Alabama, Mississippi. I mean, these are, these are states that have uh, an aggressive young workforce uh these are states that have incentives uh for companies in those heavy industries to come even if it's just a small footprint um these are states that do not have unions um so these are different than for what the traditional uh overseas companies said well i need to go to chicago you know or illinois i need to go to ohio i need to go to wisconsin you know that's where all of the heavy manufacturing is well you know, those were high tax states, you know, they had heavy government regulations, you know, they were even heavier in, in COVID. And I think COVID was a tipping point for a lot of those 
uh, those industries. Uh, so, you know, what we now have is, is a fresh way to look at things. We don't need to go to those places anymore. You know, technology has changed a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, you need to look at the, be at the best operating basis for your businesses. So it's not just because I live in Florida. I grew up actually uh, in Milwaukee. So, <laughs> you know, I'm actually going against my allegiances. But <laughs> I grew, I've lived all over the U.S. But, uh, you know, to Ajay's point there, he, he's exactly right that every state has it's different rules and regulations and, and, and red tape. And the Southern US is in terms of doing business now is really doing away with a lot of that now and, and being more welcoming and open. Uh, and that's where you see a lot of these businesses going now. Uh, so, um, you know, you go where, where you want it, if you will, and where there's, there's a fluidity of doing business. So, if you look at the, the main sectors uh, in, you know, aerospace and defense, and, you know, I, I told that story about meeting the gentleman in Kingdom Tower, you know, that that's a big business uh, for India. And, you know, I think, unfortunately, you know, there's a big buildup in the past administration. It's gone down. But, you know, thanks to what's going on again, I think that's going to be a big business again, you know, no matter what. Uh, so, you know, aerospace engineering, defense, you know, it's, it's just going to be. So, um, you know, those are all areas where you're going to look for the lowest cost to do. Uh, and I, you know, we, we see that, you know, the statistics bear it out that, uh, the Southern United States from a tax threshold and ease of doing business is going to continue to be that. I think, you know, and again, not just because Ajay is sitting there. I think Utah and Colorado are probably the two states out west that are fitting that model the same way. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Rajendra ji uh, would like to leave now. So, so thank you, Rajendra ji. I will be in touch with you. Uh, be, be healthy. You have to make all the SMEs wealthy now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, we have a uh, Mihir Shah who is, you know, helping Indian companies and Indian uh, exporters to explore a new and emerging market, particularly to understand the procedure compliances, understand the, what are the grievances can be you know, faced in future, and what are the, you know, opportunity and how the incentives or schemes can be utilized for a promotion of exports, promotion of a bilateral trade, or uh, using and uh, taking advantage of the FTA agreements with the various countries. Mihir, floor is open for you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, I was I was looking at the entire presentation by everyone, and uh, thank you, sir, for inviting. So, Mr. Libas and everyone did mention, and thank you, Mr. Libas, for you know putting it across of how uh, easy or how you know thought provoking it is to you know have a setup in US. Uh, now, when we're discussing about, you know, how kind of investment and other things can happen, Ajay, sir, and all of you have did mention, in fact, the two ladies did mention about it. Uh, unfortunately, Sarunke, sir, uh, we did have some preference from U.S. in form of a GSP, which is no more in existence. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the time where we're looking at uh, promoting, and I'm not talking about a new startup or an investor, I'm talking about pure, hardcore export business of goods, commodities going from India. Uh, to be sold to the American companies or companies based out of US. Uh, so we are losing out on that technically. Uh, we talked about FTAs. Uh, we are, as in India, we are signing FTAs with all other countries. I mean, I'm sure all of you are hearing on the India UAE SEPA, uh, which is the latest talk of the town. But from a US perspective, we do not have any GSP. We, in fact, do not have any uh, bilateral trade agreement. Uh, and this probably to a certain level makes it challenging for an Indian exporter uh, to reach out to the uh, end American buyer. Uh, I did also realize, and I think that's practically for all exporters, uh, U.S. is not U.S. per se. It is U.S. is individual states is itself a country. Every country uh, is different. Every, I mean, I, every state is different. Colorado is different. Ohio is different. Uh, New York and New Jersey are different. 
and rules and regulation there makes a lot of challenging aspects. Uh, Sarongi sir, another aspect where we exporters are facing challenges are scenarios which I think Madam did mention and I think uh, Miss Manin did mention about you know the regulations on food items and food products. I mean, looking at that, you want us to export, but you know, let's talk about a new MSME. Uh, we're talking about startup. We, we can have a lot of information. We can have a lot of groups, but you know, the real thing is a pain to get an FDR approval from six months to a year, a cost. Uh, Sarun Kesar will ca carry a delegation this year, but sir, how many of MSME are easily able to reach US on a regular basis? I mean, uh, that's challenging and it's not that US you go and you are able to cater to the entire market at one go. You probably have to, you know, meet and visit uh, pockets of states every time. So these are some challenges which unfortunately are there. I'm not too sure. I have not been able to look at the details, but when I talk about the, uh, the FTA agreements, which are not available or GSP or the preferential is not available with India. I am slightly uh, able to understand that these are still available with little more developing countries like Philippines and Vietnam and Bangladesh. And now that challenges us in terms of being competitive. Because, uh, you know, those countries where uh, the goods are manufactured, they get a better edge than us because of certain threshold limit being crossed by India. And now we don't have a free trade agreement or any of the preferential treatment in terms of the duty levies and taxes. So I think these are my challenges. Uh, we do have uh, to take care of those when we are looking at how do we develop US trade. There is no doubt that it is a big potential. There is no doubt that we can grow multifolds. There is no doubt that we are talking about US equals to entire country. I mean, entire world versus the US. So if an exporter is exporting to US, is probably equivalent to exporting the entire world. But the challenges sometimes make it so difficult. And if you are able to, you know, uh, try and address these challenges through these forums, through this, uh, you know, uh, institutions, I think uh, we are able to really achieve what we want to achieve. And I think that's what I am going to put forward to. I mean, thank you, sir. That's all I have. Thank you very much. And rather, you know, this is a good thoughts you had given, uh, particularly, you know, companies, those are exploring business opportunity. Uh, how they can prepare. Other uh, uh, Joe, what we can do, we can create a document while doing business in US. This will be useful for the SME sector. And particularly, we can also give another document to the US companies because, see, large corporate can go to uh, anywhere with their own uh, help. But how the SME can do that? That's the most important. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, of course. I, I was listening to your comments there and, and you know, it's true, right? So, you know, the first thought I said is, you know, we need to find you a partner, right? You know, uh, and and link you so you can feel some fluidity so you don't have to be the one flying around to all these states, right? You know, and find a good business arrangement so you can start feeling the the fruits of, of that, you know, because you're right. It's It's just like any, you know, think of, your opposite number in the U.S. who wants to sell to India. You know what I mean? I mean, he can't go to Telangana, to Maharashtra, you know, and go to all those towns and market his product. He can't. There's just no way. You know, so that's that's our role here is to say, all right, let's find somebody who looks like you and link you guys up. And, you know, before you get busy in your own business, say, okay, you guys both do this. Let's find a good partnership agreement that you can live with and with some milestones to market each other's product, right? I, I, you know, that's kind of what I saw there, you know? And the next thing you know, you're both happy with the results. I mean, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I think that's what SMEs on both sides are looking for. And that's, easier said than done, but why not, right? And in this age with technology and being able to identify, and, and if, if you're eager to get that, then we need to know more about you so we can populate it and cross-reference it with database that we have in our building on this side. And at the same time, you know, 
refresh that and say these are some of the rules of the road in the U.S. to educate you. So, um, absolutely, I, you know, I think that's just a win for everybody, including the consumers on both sides. Okay, why you know, I, I do have to unfortunately leave to catch a train that isn't going to wait. Okay, so we'll be closing into one minute. Uh, rather, it's uh, eight o'clock now in India, so we have to close now. The point yes. is, you know, while we're not, uh, yeah, I'm giving you an opportunity. Point is, you know, the uh, uh, through the Eileen or uh, Suja Menon or uh, even uh, Joe or uh, even Ajay also when he spoke about, you know, particularly. So, uh, the outcome of this will be, you know, there is opportunity. Only how to take opportunity, how to avail the facilities, that is most important. Therefore, the SME Chamber of India, India US SME Business Council will definitely come forward and provide a handholding, guidance, support, and you know, proper connectivity. Those SMEs from India and those SMEs from the USA looking for exploring the business. So, with this word, I'm thankful to all of you. And closing remark, I would like to suggest the uh, Ajay ji to say, say a few words on this matter. So, um, I, I'll just uh, tell you what I do uh, every day and how do I support through the SMEs as, as well as uh, US India. And I just wanted to rectify um, one thing which Mihir was asking about the FDA and other stuff. Um, you know, it's a much more easier when you know the regulation and you know the right kind of a partner who can show you the way. And um, uh, I, being a judge for the Global Select for the US India, um, for many startup companies um, coming from India uh, for the last four years, because of the COVID, we didn't get uh, physical. So this would be the first year we'll do a very physical connectivity with the people after the COVID. Um, we always look for the company who do a little bit, you know, um, the knowledge, what is going on into the marketplace, wherever you want to come. Actually, right now we are doing, uh, uh, which is called a Fabtech Venture Park here in Colorado, which is a food agri-tech and biomaterial uh, venture park. And this is a, this is a big area we are uh, circulating. So there's a lot of possibility exist where you can partner with. So those information doesn't go directly. So we expect that SME Chamber of India or uh, you know India US Business Council to be linkage to all the company back home. Second, I will say that um, you know a lot of startup comes to us. It is not about the money. It is also about aware that where the mentorship will happen, where the technology you can transfer, where capital you can access. So our platform is always helping between India and US on that rock. Second, we do a uh, you know, lot of those programs where we help them to understand about the companies. So uh, those are perspective we can always uh, give back. Uh, there's a lot to be work, and I think Aline and Suza today was a very upfront that we need to be aware. So I welcome SME to come in, you know, June with the entire delegation and look at, you know, um, uh, our our partnership is also in South Dakota, Wyoming, uh, Montana, um, also in New York and Florida. We can get some right kind of a partner, which is. Uh, right SME partner for India. So you should look where the possible is and incentive can be given. I, I can help companies in terms of, you know, uh, giving more uh, attractive package from the state because I know how to negotiate with them. So we can support that way as well if it requires. So um, um, I know it's a too late there and I have to also catch up another meeting. Uh, thank you for uh, giving this opportunity and I really appreciate to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajayji. Thank you all the speakers, Mahir. Also the participants, those are, you know, uh, eagerly, you know, watching and listening to all the, you know, party, uh, the delegates, particularly from the, you know, the embassies. And I'm, I'm sure that this webinar will be useful to all of you. And I request all of you to share your thoughts, share your, you know, suggestions and your issues and grievances so that we can take up to the concern ministry as well as the embassies. With this words, I'm thankful to all of you for participating. Ajayji, thank you. Thank you very much.